to order. And uh, before we, um, I asked for a vote to go into executive session. If the town manager could please um, advise us of the protocols of the meeting. Yes. Uh, so uh, let's see. Um, the uh, the council can enter into closed session. No, no, on... no. The protocols for the meeting. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Um, it, uh, so folks probably heard, but this meeting is being recorded, so we'll we'll post it on on the town website um, for for folks to be able to watch later. Uh, with the exception, I guess, of when the council goes into closed session, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we will uh, send people to the lobby uh, and turn off the recording for that part. And then uh, once they vote to enter back into open session again, uh, folks will be readmitted. Um, if for whatever reason our uh, meeting gets interrupted, uh, I'll, I'll can't I'll, I'll close the close the meeting and disseminate um, information to to rejoin a new meeting. Um, lastly, uh, if if you have any comments or uh, want to ask a question, uh, I'm setting up the chat so that you can directly send me a message uh, through the chat function. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Mayor. And, and um, but of course, for the, these are also the protocols for the work session. And in the work session, of course, there won't be public participation. But if anyone has a question of the um, town manager, uh, you, you will be able to ask him in the, um, in the chat. And with that, uh, so, so now I'm calling the brief council meeting to order. And I'm asking for a motion to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. I move that we go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. I'll second it. Okay, is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, thank you. So Mr. Town Manager, if you can um, put all of the guests and residents into uh, the okay. waiting room to end the count. Is there a motion to end the count? We've, we've come out of executive session. Is there a motion to end the council meeting? So moved. Is there a second? I, I see Council Member Heller, their discussion. All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Now I will um, I, I will call the work session to order and turn it over to our distinguished council president. All right, thank you very much. So we have a lot to talk about here. Um, got through that fairly efficiently. Let me pull up our agenda. So, I don't have the agenda. I have all the items, but not the agenda. That's my, my The agenda is the last document in the list. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ron. One sure thing. Council meeting works. Oh, just the title. Got it. Okay. So, parking lot safety recommendations. Matt, can you walk us through this one? You're muted. Still muted. Well, folks can pull it up and, and take a look at it. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no problem. The, uh, the engineering uh, consultant that we hired uh, wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, she's uh, watching, she, she, she said that she's watching her child um, in this home alone. So um, wasn't able to, to join us, but she is planning to attend the May meeting. Um, so she can, she can, um, answer any questions for the council at the May meeting. Um, but the, the bottom line is, is that we had hired 
we had hired them to take a look at the pool parking lot and to make some uh, essentially cheap recommendations that didn't require a big infrastructure investment. And uh, they came up with uh, four different um, four different recommendations for us. Um, one one of them, um, I think, the only one that would really require uh, us to spend very much money is they. Uh, she had the idea of a ra raised uh, crosswalk area. Um, that could help with visibility. Um, but otherwise it's mostly just spray, spray painting new lines and putting down new lines. Um, one, one of the recommendations was to take those, uh, if you're picturing it, when you walk into the pool parking lot and there's the three spaces right to your left, um, she had recommended that we, we just turn it into one space. Um, uh, then, uh, parallel parked too. And uh, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. To turn it into a, a parallel parking, parking space, basically. Um, and also, and, and part, and then the, the ones on the other side to move them back. So there's more space, uh, basically. So there's more space and it's less crowded for the cars that are there and for pedestrians. Um, and, um, the, the last thing was to basically move the, the walkway to the other side. So people aren't having to continue to kind of cross across traffic. Um, so, um, I think, you know, I, I would recommend that we, we add her to the agenda uh, in the May meeting. We can, um, yeah, you know, ask her, ask her follow-up questions. And, um, if she has any other thoughts that things we might do or look into, but otherwise then we could, uh, we could basically make all of these changes. It, it would, it one day's work. So we could get it done before the pool even opens. If there was, uh, do we have the curbs already? She talked about, you know, the, the curbs for the parking spaces that would be next to the move walkway and curbs to block cars going onto the walkway is what she's talking about. Do we have those or do we have to buy those? We would have to buy those, yeah. So those, that, that, those, yeah, we would have to buy those. Okay. Is, is that kind of camera ready stuff? Like it's almost, I don't mean you go to Home Depot, but you go to the Home Depot of parking, you know, stuff and just get those. I would think those are not especially poured for us. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I was playing phone tag actually with um, somebody who's helped out. Uh, I got in touch with them from a recommendation from one of the other town managers, but that they, they've done this kind of work and sign, sign maintenance throughout town. So um, waiting for, for him to give me a call back to, to do that. But yes, to answer your question, I think it, it should be easy to get and procure. Well, these are all questions that the only issue tonight is whether you want to put this on the agenda. I think we should definitely put it on the agenda. Yep. Okay, great. Um, I've already reached out to her uh, and she has it on her calendar to, to attend the, the May meeting. So um, we'll plan for that. And, and, doesn't someone want to write an article for the journal about this? I guess it's too late. I guess it's it's not it's not necessarily too late. It's or, too late for this. <laughs> well, no, I, I haven't. I it hasn't been put to bed yet. But do you do you um? How do you want to? Is there any need to publicize this anymore? I guess maybe not. I think not because it'd be too confusing right now. Because we're saying, well, we should maybe do this or do that. And we need to understand. So when I read this, I didn't really understand the whole picture of what she was talking about. So I think anything we write would be maybe let's give people more questions and not understand that. I think we have to, I think it's something that we should just act on. You know, it's, it's public safety. I think okay, I, 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 think, I think it's fine. 
I do think uh, one thing that I was going to ask her for the May meeting is to help us with the, the, some other visualization tool because I, I I also had a little bit of trouble, Debbie, picturing it all. So yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if this is my image of it, I'll try to convey it in a few words. It is as you walk into the pool from Warwick, on your left will be a single parallel parking spot and the car, if the car is in it, it'll be pointing towards Warwick. That's, that's also there. On your right, there'll be vertical parking spaces along the way. Um, and behind the vertical parking spaces will be the walkway. So the walkway is now the other side of those parking spaces and it goes down to the bridge where again, you would meet traffic at the bridge if there's traffic crossing the bridge. Uh, she also said that we should put a sign in showing the L-shaped part pattern of movement so showing the left turn for cars before the bridge. Yeah, because the only thing like, it would be confusing like how that parallel Parker, how do they turn around to get out? Well, they, 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 but, this would be this drive around. Yeah, they do a U to park, to park, and then they get out easily because they're parked the right way at that point. Oh, got it. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Um, so we'll have that at the council meeting. Uh, two topics from the Environment Committee. I guess, Robin, if you can. Talk about them briefly, apiary and carbon garden, starting with the apiary. Well, well I'm going to talk about the apiary. Okay. I'm going to give an update, and then I think Robin is going to make some kind of recommendation. So, so for everyone to recall, uh, I think it was last year that the uh, Environment Committee um, uh, made made a recommendation for to contract with a beekeeper named Sarah Peel to place an apiary uh, in the parkland not far from the town entrance on Wisconsin Avenue, and the council uh, it, it was not this council as you recall it was the last council that voted to uh, charge the manager and the town attorney to negotiate with Sarah Peel to um, have a memorandum of understanding to place a, an apiary in town land. So that I think that was in the spring, right, Mr. Councilor Barr? And yeah. So um, now this is someone who had not uh, had not had any experience contracting with with the town government. She basically, I think, had done place bees and on private land. And so, in the course of negotiating with her uh, with with an agreement that protected the town and also our citizens, um, she didn't completely understand um, how many, the great extent of the liability she was going to um, take on by, by uh, with this very nice offer. And, and after many months of negotiation, I think she kind of got scared off. And, and one of the things that we ended up doing was um, we spent money on fencing and we also there there was a whole issue about insurance and and so the I think the council approved uh, the idea of paying for her insurance and on and on so so it really wasn't it had been advertised as as a free opportunity and it really unfortunately wasn't free and and so then I think she basically got scared away at the end and so then. Um, this year, the chair of the Environment Committee found another um, potential beekeeper, and um, he gave her the um, that that agreement, which th that was a gr an agreement that had been basically approved by the last town council, and 
Uh, so he gave her this agreement, which that was an agreement for Sarah Peel, not for anybody else. And, and then I guess the committee is recommending that we move forward with this other person. But in the meantime, several things have happened. First of all, we, ha we have a new council. So I'm not, I'm not sure that this new council is committed to this whole idea, uh, notwithstanding this person. Secondly, the, um, the town has passed, the council's passed a new procurement policy. And so I'm not sure that you wouldn't want to put it out for bid. And the third thing that's happened in the last year is that when there was um, a proposal made for a, um, for a pickleball court, uh, when there was a hearing on it uh, for the for the uh, for the pickleball exhibition, the a number of residents that live near the uh, proposed court pickleball court uh, objected to the fact that they were not affirmatively informed about it before it, it got to the the point of council consideration, and in terms of the apiary. Uh, I believe the only resident that we affirmatively checked with was was the one closest. I don't I don't think we um, formally checked with all of the residents in the vicinity of the apiary. So and then and then um, in the follow up with um, so I asked uh, the town manager to check with the, the new potential beekeeper to find out if she even accepted the terms of the um, what was offered to Sarah Peel and or Keel, I forget her last name. Um, and she hasn't really indicated that she has had a chance to review it according to Matt. So that's where it stands now. So it's really up to the council to decide um, how you want to handle this. The, there, the, the council does, according to what Matt said, the town manager said in an earlier work session, the, the council can, um, there's an exception to the procurement law, so the council could move forward with this new beekeeper, but um, not, it's, not, it's not required. So with that, uh, I will turn it over to Councilor Barr for his, um, perhaps he has a proposal or an idea. Yeah, actually I've broken it into two parts and if the first part isn't successful, that's the end of it. If the first part is successful, then we'll move on to the second part. So the first part is a motion that we place beehives or a beehive in the area that is currently fenced in, which is to the south side of Wisconsin in the open land uh, created by WSSC renovation, um, and that's that's it. Um, is there a second for that proposal? Well, I we're, we're not voting this, on it tonight. Yeah, just, well, just, just, just all right. Just, all right, just bring it up for discussion. And I just want to get a sense of how many people are in favor of the idea of be a beehive. There, some background, you know, which is widely available in the media. Uh, it Bees are in steep decline um, in this country, particularly, and also around the world. Um, reasons for it include um, overuse of certain pesticides um, and also loss of habitat. Um, European honeybees, particularly, have been utterly decimated. Um, to the extent that um, <coughs> farmers are now trying to find other kinds of bees that can uh, substitute for them if they are in such short supply. So there are real efforts now to try to increase honeybee, European honeybee populations. Why? Because they are uh, responsible for between 30 and 60 percent of all food in this country and in the world. Um, they pollinate plants. Uh, it's 30 percent is a good number. It's, sometimes they're partially responsible for pollinating, sometimes they're fully responsible for pollinating. That's why you can see numbers between 30 and 60 percent, but it's a very substantial amount of our food production. 
And bees are not wasps, they're not yellow jackets. Um, yellow jackets are the villains. They are the ones who can sting you and get away with it. Um, bees can't sting you unless they die. I mean, that is, they will die if they sting you. So bees are very, very, very much less likely to sting you than, than our yellow jackets. Um, so they're the good guys. Uh, they pollinate our plants um, and our flowers too. Um, and they really don't sting us. Um, so we're doing a good deed if we put in these honeybees and saving honeybees. Um, uh, that's the story. All right, other thoughts? You know, I, I'm very, um, I'm, can I go? I'm sorry, did I jump the sure. line here? Nobody else has come yep. out. Yeah, open discussion here. I'm, I'm very, um, um, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, can't think of the word. I'm just tired. Ambivalent. What? You sound ambivalent or mixed. I'm, I'm not. I'm not ambivalent at all. Actually, I actually don't think we should do it, and not because I don't believe we should have that, that we need honeybees and we need to be sensitive to that. I just think that it's just one more thing on our list to take care of, and I think we have enough in the town to take care of. I'm worried that we lose this beekeeper because you know she doesn't want to do it anymore. Then we got to go find another beekeeper. And I, I just don't like the idea of these bees. I wouldn't want it in my backyard. If this, I'm, not, I'm not anywhere near it, but in just in thinking of my other, my neighbors that I'm representing, I wouldn't want to do this to them. And I think, you know, I know people that keep bees in their backyards and that's fine. They keep bees in their backyards and anyone's welcome to do that. But as a town, I just don't think we should be putting our energy to the bees. That's it. I agree. I mean, I think that the bees, like the area that, I believe is slotted for them is, um, you know, a lot of kids that go walking along like that back hiking path down there. And regardless if they sting or not, you know, kids are scared of bees. Um, and I think that, you know, we were just talking about really being stretched thin in terms of like what the priorities are for the town and how do we make sure that we are, you know, following up with all of those things. And it just seems like this is not like, I don't really understand what we benefit from it. It seems like a pretty big, like, you know, there's a lot of questions and insurance and things up in the air. And, you know, I don't know that it would be worth it from that standpoint of, you know, what would we really get, get from it besides a, a good deed. Okay, well, I mean, our, our flowers would benefit, they'd be pollinated, which means they bloom, um, which is a good thing. And our plants, if we're growing vegetables, they will benefit from it because uh, they, they, they will produce the fruits, which are vegetables. Um, but then is this like something that Matt like really has to kind of oversee for, for the process? There's some work for Matt to do, yeah, um, in, in contacting Elizabeth Harris, who is the, the beekeeper. Um, but the beekeeper will maintain the hives. Um, that's part of the agreement. But the other one that she she just never even wanted to do it again. Like she had volunteered her time, but then she didn't. We got scared them. off by all our all our um, legislating around her. Basically, that was the issue. I think this is the kind of thing the county should be doing, not us. This is, this is a real problem that we that we, we need bees. The county should be doing this. They have the resources, they got the, the crews. I don't think we should be doing this. I'm sorry, I jumped in again. Sorry, Steve. Um, no problem. I personally think that we should do it. I think it would be a benefit to, direct and indirect benefit to residents. And I think that the potential hazard is slight to borderline non-existent. I mean, I've, I have a, we have a beehive, just a natural beehive, carpenter, we call it carpenter bees in our backyard. And we've never had an issue and they very nice have them take care of pollination. But, but I also respect, I, I respect everything that folks are saying, but I, I um, the comments about the town needing to prioritize activities resonates with me. Um, you know, this would just be a pilot and would probably be a minimal um, additional burden on town office. Perhaps this is a pilot that we should put on the shelf for now and uh, reconsider prior to next summer when hopefully maybe we'll have some additional town staff 
uh, in place and organization functioning, then we can try it as uh, a, a, a well-planned out pilot. Mr. President, can I, can I yeah. just say one thing? Yes. So um, I forgot to, I, I got an email from council member um, uh, Kumar who is out of the country right now. He says many residents continue to question the wisdom of this intervention. Risks and challenges continue to outweigh the rewards here. Are there plans to raise awareness and engage residents given this renewed push? So I think that goes very nicely hand in hand with um, what you just said. So I think, I think it would be beneficial if the committee wrote an article again about all these outstanding mm -hmm. benefits that council member Barr talks about, and then perhaps there'll be renewed engagement by residents. And this will also give us an opportunity to let the neighbors know of, of this idea. Yep, I, I agree. So, and I, so I hate to, so I, you know, I hate to, to, to put the total kibosh on it, but I think that we should, I think it'd be, I think that would be also in keeping with um, the comments of Council Members Heller and Rovac that, that to keep it under discussion and to see what, what, the, in, what the engagement is and how much interest there is. Right, but I, I think it's clear that this time we don't have, that, that this proposal does not have the support of a majority of the council. Yeah. So I, yeah. I don't think it needs to, it's not appropriate to bring it to the uh, council meeting. Right, but I, but I, but I, I don't, I tell, I think that's, a, I think that's a smart move, but I, I think we should continue to um, work on, you know, the committee and, you know, the yep. staff I, to, to work on this, because I think in the long run, it will be beneficial and that we shouldn't just say completely no. Yep, concur. Okay. Uh, Robin, are you going to talk about the carbon garden or is that the mayor also or Matt? No, I'm Robin. Okay. I get, I get to talk about it. Okay. Yes, please. Um, I, so I don't know if you've all read the uh, very nice um, note from the two high school seniors. Um, when, uh, they both at Bethesda Chevy Chase. One, Alex, is a Somerset resident and they're working through Bethesda Green at the moment. Um, and their idea is to plant what they say is a carbon garden in roughly the same area as I was talking about earlier for the uh, apiary. Um, carbon garden is, is a native garden with native plants and shrubs. Um, and the, the reason why you plant natives is they have deeper roots and deeper roots mean they capture more carbon than um, imports uh, non-native plants. Um, they will also um, further nourish the soil so that it's very good conditions for growing in. Um, and they will also um, inject the roots with um, a concoction, uh, micro rhizal um, concoction actually, which encourages fungal growth um, among the plants, uh, which is a communication system. Uh, and that again is very supportive of plant growth and also helps enrich the humus, humus underneath the um, soil, creating greater um, benefits. So um, that's the proposal. Um, I, I had a couple of questions off them myself. Um, but uh, it sounds like a, a wonderful proposal, actually. Um, there'll be no cost to us. Um, they, they'd be supported by Bethesda Green and the Chesapeake Bay Trust. Um, the, um, I'm not sure the Environment Committee was the right committee to send it to. I also shared it with PNRC because PNRC is responsible for our parks, and this is a, going, would be put in on our parkland, in fact. And I haven't got all the comments from PNRC yet from it. Um, so. Anyway, that's a quick summary. Great, thank you, Robin. Mr. President, Sorry. can I, let me give you the input of uh, Councilmember uh, Kumar. He says, 
PNRC might need time to review and could engage the seniors. I am supportive of it if it can be more than a demonstration and folded into the town's regular grounds maintenance under the assumption that once Alex and Andrew graduate this fall, we wouldn't just dismantle it. So doesn't that work hand, hand in hand with what you're saying, Councilor Rabar? Yeah, that, that, that is very much along the lines of what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, I just want to add his input. Right, but just clarify. I think we all received that email from Kabir. Oh, so, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Thank you. Luis, I didn't. He, he just used a, a blank. I guess he like copied it to all of us, so we didn't see who else he sent it to. I don't think Not I got it. it. Me either. Really? I, like I got it actually. Oh well, then I sent it to me. That's, Maybe he sent it to with assumptions. I think he just sent it to me because I offered, I I offered to um, add his comments to the meeting. Okay, well then please continue. Um, but I note we're more than half an hour behind. Uh, so, Robin, are, do you recommend that this be presented at the council meeting to vote on it? Well, actually, do we, want, do we need to uh, wait more for PNRC? I, I, I think we can present it at the council meeting. I, I explained to PNRC that we were it would be introduced at the May meeting. And so hopefully we will have their feedback before the May meeting and I'll try to send a, an email or get Kristen somehow to say that's the deadline for their getting the comments to us. Super, and would we be able to have Alex and or Andrew be present? Um, hopefully, meeting? yes. I, 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 I haven't good. spoken to them myself, but hopefully, yes. Okay. I, I, I think they I think they are uh, they're prepared to attend the meeting um, Super. if it's on the agenda. Does does anybody have any questions or comments or can we move on? Sounds good to me. Okay. Me too. Great. Thank you. Um, pool committee. So pool committee. Thank you. And I think the first item we can just skip past on the all of the parking lot stuff. Yeah, because they, they didn't have the, the information that we got tonight about, you know, that, we, that we've all received it when they came up with this. So I think we just skipped that. Yep. So move on to the pool season. Uh, do you want to introduce this, Debbie? Yeah, they would like, they would like us to consider standardizing, opening the pool the middle of May to the middle of September and not be coming back each, each, each year to ask, can we open it early? Can we close it late? Um, I think I've convinced them maybe <laughs> that it should just be middle of May to middle of September. And we should stop, you know, um, you know, begging for more time that this is what we'll budget for and what's probably, yeah, I tried to present this. I think this is what's reasonable. So they would like that to, I guess. So, so, um, Remember when we were discussing this? I think this is a question for Ron because I think that would require either would that be would that Mr. Ten Attorney would that require uh, changing the amending the code or passing a resolution? And how 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 necessary is that? Because isn't that something that's decided on a contract by contract basis? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that's right. Th those are the, the three options really that are available. You could adopt an ordinance to place those dates in the code. I, I would probably recommend against that because then if you ever wanted to change those dates, you would have to pass another ordinance changing the dates. However, then again, that may be what's desired to you know, give some permanency to those dates, that selection. Second, you know, a little less permanent would be to adopt a resolution and you know, just establishing those dates by, by policy. Resolutions are a little easier to amend over time because you don't need to change the actual code. But pursuant to our resolution adoption policy, we would still introduce that at one meeting, discuss it and vote on it at a second meeting. The third option would be to just leave that to the actual contract that's approved by the council each year, which is how it's been done in the past. The contract with the pool management company specifies the opening and, and closing dates and bases the compensation on 
those dates. But really, because that's the, a policy discussion it, as to what option the council prefers. Because the the other two options bind the council, right? So that means future councils must follow what the law is. That, that's right, Mr. Mayor. And, and, well, and future councils could change those, could change the ordinance or change the resolution. But but if they pass an ordinance that the season is May fifteenth to September fifteenth, and then and then in future years they want to have it from September fifteenth to October thirtieth, then they then the council would have to pass an amendment to the code, right? And so what? Why? I mean, what? What's the? I don't really understand the purpose of doing that when the council can decide it right now on a year by year basis. But again, like you say, it's a, it's a, if that's the policy the council wants to make, but I think it creates some inflexibility, but that's up to the council. Can I, can I say some, two things? One is I think we should do the thing that's least cumbersome so that we don't have to always be addressing it. So I wouldn't want to make a code that we didn't have to undo. But the larger question is, what does this council think? Does this council think that we should open the pool mid-May to mid-September? Do we think we should leave it to, you know, Memorial Day to, you know, um, Labor Day? You know, um, I, that's the part we haven't really talked about was what do we think besides what does the pool committee think? What do we think? Right. I think that, I mean, I think that that would be a great, you know, kind of compromise to open it mid-May to mid-September moving forward, you know, I just don't, my challenge with it is like, I just, I don't want to have to be d discussing it at length at every council meeting. Like, should we open it to October or now? Should we open it to November? Or should we open it to this? It seems like it just came up last year all the time. And I just want, I would like to have a decision made. And then that's what the decision is. Um, you know, for the, the, the pool year, this is the money that we have, and this is how we can open it and then just have it not come up again. I agree. I think we also have to look at the pool committee as it is, they're, they're advising us. They're telling us what, the, what, what, what the majority of them think, but then I think we have to take a look at it hard and, and make the decision. That's right. Um, Matt, can, can you uh, clarify for me or remind me in our proposed budget, what is the end of the pool season? I know we're starting May 8th this year, but what is the no. end of the pool season? May 13th, Steve. Oh, May 13th, thank you. Yes, yeah, so our, our, our budget is um, for the... Uh, uh, the the number we got in our budget is taken directly from our contract, which is um, Memorial Day weekend through uh, Labor Day. Okay. So, so go. What is the? So I guess I, I'm. I like the idea of, of perhaps passing a, a resolution on the pool season just to clarify expectations. But I, I'm not I'm not comfortable with with um, extending the season like this as the new normal. And we made except it was clearly stated that it was exceptional circumstances during COVID the last two years. And the start of this season that that we modified the seasons. I, I would think we should go back to what we've had before. And that's really is the discussion we can have when we actually vote on it. So I'm happy to move it forward as a um, as a topic for discussion at the council meeting. Robin, what do you think? Well, it's money. Um, in other yes. words. It's three, extra, three or four, depending, depending extra weeks of season, which, you know, for the pool contract, that is $50,000 probably, um, in fact. Um, 
and it's money we don't necessarily have um, going forward as, as our budget has tightened. Um, so, I mean, what I originally proposed was that we do it for this year because we have the money this year, which was the May 15th one, and we do. But we won't necessarily have the money next year to do it. So I, I think I, there is a good financial reason for keeping it one year at a time, even though it's a hassle. I know it's a hassle, but it, there is a good financial reason to do it that way. I, what do you think, Jeffrey? What do you think Kabir would say? I think I know what Kabir was. What did he say? <laughs> I think I do too. He did not comment on this uh, on that item. Really? But I think, as you all know, he uh, he's I think publicly in favor of trying to have year round swimming. So I, I he didn't he didn't he didn't say anything about right. that to me. Okay. Well. Is it, I, I guess the question is, do we bring this to a vote or do we just do it year by year? You know, I'm comfortable either way, quite frankly. If this council feels that we should do this year by year, then, then go for it. You know, it, yeah. it's really a money decision and we have to be very mindful of, of our budget, then leave it the way it is. And, and if it's appropriate, open it early and close it a little later, just like we're doing this year. But do we have a set close date for this fall? Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I asked Matt. It's, it's it, it, yeah. I mean, unless unless we unless the council voted to extend the season, our contract says that the final day is Labor Day. And actually, this year especially, it probably does not make sense to extend it because we've budgeted for all of that. Um, infrastructure work at the pool to, to redo the pool deck. And so we, if we extend the season, we, we shrink our, our window to get that work done. And let me remind the, the newer council members that historically what has happened is that almost every year this topic comes up and then in August or in, in August or maybe even September, uh, the council might consider when they know what the, the uh, weather might be or how the the, uh, the budget is flowing or what the usage has been. I think there have been years when it's kept open. And it also depends on, the, there's always the issue of personnel because most of the personnel um, at these pool management companies, they, they all, they're, they're students who go back to school. So I think there have been a number of years when the pool's been open on weekends only and things like that. So, so right. I think you just have to see. Well, I think we, it sounds like we have our answer. It sounds like we really shouldn't extend into September this year because of what the work that has to happen on the deck. Um, and it sounds like we want the flexibility to only extend if we can afford to extend. You know, I, I think we kind of have our answer. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I think you're right, Debbie. Yep. And not adopting that pool season does not, as the mayor said, does not preclude us from making an extension in the course of the summer if we don't have to do the contracting work or for whatever reason. I mean, we have the flexibility. Although it is, as, as Shannon pointed out, it can feel like to me, a bit of a pain having to address. At every council meeting, yeah. At every council meeting, but, <laughs> but it's one of the major activities in the town, major budget uh, um, expenditures. So it makes sense that we spend a lot of time on it. Okay with me. Okay. So it will, we will not have that on the agenda. Thank you. Stormwater Study Committee, final report and next steps. And that, Is that you said, Mr. President, in order to save time, let me remind you that the, the idea of putting this in on the agenda was to not discuss the report. It was just to decide how you want to accept it and how you want it to be presented to the council and how you want it to be presented to the town. And there was, I believe, the council member Barr, 
I forgot who, I think, wasn't it Council Member Barr's legislation? I think there's some, there's some um, requirements of the legislation. Maybe it was you, Mr. President. Yes, I think they, need, they should have another town forum. I believe that's uh, spelled out. In and the so the idea was to decide what, how does the council want to receive the report and the findings? It's very exciting. And also how you want to present it to the town. And then after that, you'll decide how you're going to apply the uh, recommendations. That's long-term. Long I thought term. that I thought that we were they were going to be doing a, a meeting where the stormwater management committee presented it on May 10th or 11th. Yeah, they, they, there is their, their final forum is going to be then, and that's they're yeah. going to present their their final recommendations to the town in that in that forum. Yeah. They also have an article in the upcoming journal um, that describes. I haven't read it, but I believe it describes the final recommendations. Oh. Right. Well, let me say that Councilmember Kumar says, I would welcome a longer standalone session. This is important area with wide implications for property values. As I've been recommending to Ellen, Julie, Robin, I think we need to prioritize public good works interventions versus subsidizing resident interventions. This requires longer discussions. So I think that he, I think other council members have suggested that there be a separate work session completely dedicated to this report, in addition to whatever required public forums there are. So I think the idea tonight was to decide when you want to do that and if you want to do that. Well, I do it after the, the second forum. I think we all need to attend that forum, but sometime fairly soon after that forum. Um, June maybe. How, how are folks, or, or later in May? So how about uh, the following Monday, May 16th? How does that work on people's calendars? Well, oh, that's <laughs> the night of the work session. Oh, that's our work session. Oh, it was a good night. Okay, so we need another night. The uh, May 23rd, Monday, May 23rd? Because um, it just seems like Monday's workout for us. It's fine for me. Um, I'm okay on that one too, yeah. I think that works for me. Okay. And so, uh, who do you want there that night? Um, I think we, I, I would like to have the, uh, the stormwater study committee there. I think sort of recognize everything they've done, then they can answer questions and provide some depth well, to what the well, recommendation given that you're that we don't know what their schedule is um you might mm -hmm. want to come up with a couple of different options but um, we don't have that tonight yeah we we, don't, we can we can uh, the town manager and i can work on the, on that scheduling after tonight but the main thing is right. that we, we wanted to find out how the council wanted this presented so that's I, I think the, the, the key individual from the committee to, to have in the meeting with us would be Ellen, well, as the, the chair of the committee. Uh, uh, Julie Greenberg, I think, would also be essential. And, and Julie would also be key. But if there's scheduled conflicts, so it's not possible for everyone on the committee to make it, I think that's okay. The more people you want to invite, the tougher it is to coordinate the schedule. And when you're coordinated, if it's possible to make it a 5.30 time, that would be best for me, considering what I got going on the next day. We'll, we'll, we'll work on all that. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you all. So I believe that brings us to Public Safety Committee and several items. Well, I think some of them can be presented by Shannon, and then I'm going to add... Um, Great. Well, okay, I noticed I, it doesn't look like the um, the stuff made it to the work session um, documents. 
But so basically, um, for the Public Safety Committee, there's got there's a lot of things that are in the works right now, and a lot of things that Kumar is really working on, um, and we're trying to kind of move forward. So I will go out of order and start with the um, town policing update. And um, from that, I believe that there's been a bunch of questions that have been asked and about the history of our policing program. Um, and I don't know if we have any of those answers. I think they were from like 2008 or something like that. Um, but basically the committee wants to um, do a guide where they start to put together recommendations for the policing policy um, moving forward. And so I and the committee just recommend that, you know, I don't know that we have to go back on all of the history um, and just allow the committee to kind of start working moving forward on a new path. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I do. Um, we, we, we really are negligent in not having any written agreement with the police force that specifies their duties and also what their status is with us, um, their contract employees, uh, which they are, um, or contract workers, actually, they're not employees. Um, and it, also the, the lines of, of authority, they, they point through Matt, but there's nothing documenting it in our system that that, that is. So we, we really do need to lay that out um, for, for them. Um, I think the committee is probably uh, in the best place to help Matt do that, but it is ultimately Matt's responsibility for producing that document. Um, I also think we should actually ask um, Officer Chung, who is our main uh, correspondent here, what he thinks their role is in town. And, and so that can be incorporated into the operations manual. So those are some yeah, stuff. I know we're working on a date to have a um, meeting with question them. and answer session with Officer Chung as well. Um, so I think that, you know, Matt, I don't know if you have any um, thoughts on on you know how to kind of move this forward yeah i guess i was thinking um part of it is about reporting right uh, you know what they're doing and making sure that there's some transparency there um i think we i think it is important that officer chung be brought in um, and we may end up even having to talk with some some folks at Montgomery County um, police. The only thing that they sign right now is is basically a, a, a secondary employment uh, agreement that they're required to do with Montgomery County. And that I think does tie into the discussion a little bit. One of the things that that Officer Chung had had mentioned to me is um, that agreement, in essence, says that even though the town is contracting out for security uh, security con uh, security services, that they are still a active. Uh, Montgomery County employee and are still bound to the the you know ethical uh, regulations of of their employment there, and so we would just need we just need to we need to be deliberate about it so that we're not creating a, anything that's conflicting in any way with with their if assuming we want to continue you know with. Uh, hiring or contracting out um, active Montgomery County police officers for the program. And do we know, like, um, as far as Sergeant Chong's, um, you know, contract that we, or lack of contract that we have with him, when it goes until? Right now, they, 
we extended an offer to to them, you know, years ago, and it's just an ongoing thing. But that you know, that could be another one similar to, you know, right now that the town manager and the town attorney are appointed each year in, in Somerset. Um, I guess that would be a policy discussion, whether the committee wants to be part of that or what, how the council yeah, feels, well that, if, if the town manager just hires them or if they need, if okay. they should be appointed. At the okay, so let me, let me clarify that. So that, so what you're both talking about is why the committee is going to be coming up with some policies for administering the police program that will eventually be considered and voted on by the council. That, that, that's the bottom line issue here that basically the, the, the town manager has control over the policing program, but the town manager has no guidelines and the town man, this is not just Matt, no town, when, when the police were originally hired, there were never any guidelines to direct all the town manager that, that all the town managers that we've had, and we've probably had about four since we hired the police over 15 years ago. So the idea is that the committee will make some recommendations on a policy that will then come to the council for you to approve. So the answer to your question is, there. The, the way Sergeant Chung is hired is the same way all the police officers are hired, the same way the town engineer is hired, which is all under the purview of the town manager. But the town manager ha doesn't have any guidelines. So, so that's the problem. So are we comfortable with um, having the Public Safety Committee work on providing some guidelines as to what they think? Yeah, um, yeah that was... The yeah, that that's that was the whole that was one of the great motivations for reviving that committee. And I and I and I know that that's in, in the work plan. You know, okay. the, the committee chair has created a tremendous work plan for the committee. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think that there was just um I don't I don't it seemed like there was people waiting on some different information and um, you know, within the committee and kind of going back and forth. But, um, you know, it sounds like we're ready to go ahead and have the committee start to, um, you know, kind of propose some more specific plan that we would work with Matt on right. um, moving and, and, forward. And, and the committee is in the process of requesting some information from the police by way of Matt. Right. So I think, I think uh, one of the reasons it's on that update is what you just gave the update in town policing is to, to stay where we where we are right now. Yeah, I mean, there's one other issue that I hope can be dealt with in parallel and, and be finished before the policy is developed. And this is to do with the Google Doc that the um, police complete a line in the Google Doc for every incident that happens while they're on duty in Somerset. They put a line in there on it. Um, and so that's, the, that, that's a request that you that you can make tonight to Matt. Well, sure. Well, let, let me finish it so that the whole council is aware. Um, at the moment, as Kumar has pointed out, um, that contains sensitive information in it, which is the um, address and often, sometimes even the name of the individual. Um, the other problem with it is that they do nothing when there isn't an incident which leads to large gaps in the spreadsheet that you don't know whether there was even a police officer in town. So A, we need to sort out what we wanna do with the sensitive information um, in terms of, because we want to make more of this information public if we can. And secondly, we've got to do something simple to record when they're in town so that people can see they were in town. Um, and I think those things can be worked out quickly um, and there are ways to do it. Um, and, and I think that the, the town manager and the committee are working with the second district commander on that too. Yeah. 
I mean, the, 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 the simplest thing is simply for one of them anyway, is just put in a, a column in the spreadsheet, um, just tick if it was all, all was quiet, if there were no incidents, just take that. So the only thing they have to do if there are no incidents is just make that entry. Um, but I mean, there could be other ways to do it. Yeah, I, th I, I think even um, just adding something that has, you know, the date and time that they were there. And so they, yeah, yeah Officer Chung was there from 2 a.m. To, to 5 a.m. on Monday the, the 18th. And yeah, no, no events recorded. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're all, so that, I mean, I, I know that that Google doc is um, part of the public safety committee, you know, is already in discussion about that Google doc. Um, so I know that that would be rolled up within their recommendations. Well, for... I, that, that's, I want it done in parallel is that because I think it can move faster than the policy development. That's what I'm suggesting to a committee. Okay. Did, right. you, did you want? Did you want to talk about fire? Are you going to talk about fire now? Who? Shannon. <laughs> the uh, Bethesda Fire Department. Oh, Are you going to talk about that, or did you want me to talk about it? Um, you can talk about it. Okay. So, so first of all, the going to item number three under the Public Safety Committee questions and requests for BFD, the, in, in their review of the uh, uh, bylaws of the um, Bethesda Fire Department, it, it, it's, it's now unclear as to which bylaws for the committee are currently in effect. So the, the, the committee, while they do, want to, they do want the council to move forward with um, approving the Somerset board position description, given that it's not clear whether we even have a position on the board because the, um, the, the bylaws that are, I think I discussed this last month, they discovered that the bylaws that are uh, located on their website or that, that were given to us are, were, were not properly enacted. So apparently the Bethesda Fire Department is now in the process of again, reviewing their bylaws. So, so before the Somerset board position description would even be effective, um, we would need to know that we actually have a Somerset board position. So, so the committee needs more information from the Bethesda Fire Department. So, so it has been suggested that we have our town attorney write a letter to the Bethesda Fire Department to ask them for uh, copies of the minutes when the um, new bylaws were put into effect. They also would like to review the uh, the um, the audits for the for the um, organization and also a clarification as to uh, who and when was the council to the Bethesda Fire Department appointed. And then the committee is also, I think you all have received a copy of a suggested letter to Chief Goldstein. Um, they're, they're requesting that the, um, the, the council and I send that letter to the chief. So that, that can just be, if you can all agree to that, we'll just send the letter. And then they would also like the the BFD board position um, placed on the council agenda for May. Doesn't that summarize what their requests are, Councilor Rovac? Yes. Is thank that, you. Okay, Mr. President, so I'll turning back over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, legislative matters, uh, National Gun Violence Day for the consent agenda. And I, I think, is there any disagreement about putting it on the consent agenda? 
for the town to no, sign. Right, yeah. Okay. Little Falls closure. Um, I, I'm not sure what the status is. Is there an updated letter for us to consider? Um, I think Councilmember Barr wanted to take the lead on this. Yeah, okay. right. I mean, I, I, I'm liaison to the traffic committee, and the traffic committee has written to um, Councilmember Friedson and to, to Jeffrey. Um, and what they're requesting, and I certainly support, is that we uh, at demand, ask whatever we do of Andrew Friedson that uh, he arranges uh, public in meetings uh, where our residents can give input on the idea of um, a two lane Little Falls Parkway. Um, that, and that's it, nothing else. Uh, so we don't take a position on whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, we ask for public meetings. And the reason why we don't take a position is because residents are divided. Um, that that um, some residents think it could actually help in town um, and others see it as a problem. Right. So uh, thanks for that summary, Robin. One, one question about the traffic committee's recommendation. My, my recollection of the Little Falls Parkway issue that there are really two there's, there's the question of them narrowing it from two lanes to one lane. From, and there's the question of the weekend closures. Yeah, right. Well, there's the, the, uh, this, the moving it to two lane was supposed to address the closure issue because it would mean that the other half of Little Falls Parkway would be permanently closed to cars and oh, so okay. then would be uh, you know, available for cyclists and pedestrians and all those good types. So that's, okay. that's it. So I like that. that I think that that's a, a very good position to take. And, and I like the suggestion of the committee. Uh, what do other council members think? Uh, Shannon? I think that that is a good idea to um, have a forum on it. And because I think that I agree that the neighbors are very divided on um, the openings and the closings. And so, you know, I don't think we're in a position to speak in one way or the other as a town at this point. Um, and uh, Debbie? You're muted. Sorry, I, I agree. I, I think um, I, I like the public forum idea. In my in my little uh, blurb to the town about this, I did tell people they should write to their representatives, and I listed all their names and email addresses so they can do it. So uh, you know, I think this is a great way to handle it. Okay, so um, should we put that on the, the non-consent agenda though, just to give. Uh, town members a chance to discuss it or should we put it on the we're just requesting forums uh, a, a forum I think maybe we can just put that on the consent agenda I see Debbie yeah. nodding yes yeah a any concerns with putting it on the consent agenda not at the moment okay. but some residents the, check the, the one the, the one yeah. thing I want I want I want to say and I want to reiterate is that the the Little Falls Parkway closure is controlled by the Parks Department. The Parks Department at this time has no plans to reopen Little Falls Parkway on the weekend. So the, the only issue for all of us is whether we want to take a position to request to the Parks Department to open it on the weekend. And, and but it's, but it's not as if it's, it, it's not, you know, it's not a pending decision, right? It's well, something. It, it's it's, um, and the proposal that that council member Friedson was working on, uh, the the latest information that I got from him la late late last week is that once they come up with more of a formal proposal, they they do plan to present it to the different communities. So I think. That at this point, which which is hand in hand, sort of with what the uh, traffic committee wrote, I believe, 
And so at this point, I, I don't think anyone would object to putting a, a letter requesting that there be public hearing, as Councilmember Rivick was saying, on the consent agenda. I mean, who, who would, you know, I don't think anybody would be opposed to that. But, but and, I, and I think that Council Member Heller has written a very good um, summary of what's going on in the town journal and, and maybe we can just wait and see what residents what residents say hmm. but but i'm not sure that that what position we have is any more powerful than all the voices of citizens in the area are and and organized but, but i'm not sure that it's going to happen right. so we're just going to we're going to consider voting well, we'll put on the consent agenda to send a letter that recommends a town forum on the subject of uh, two lanes versus one lanes in Little Falls, Falls Parkway, because that's yeah. the only topic that's formally out there. So who, who will write this letter? The traffic committee? The traffic committee has already written the letter, actually. We could put, we, we could just, we could just, uh, you could just put that on as the as the letter that um, you, is. Would that be your recommendation, Councilor Barr? Yeah, the, the, the council writes a letter to Andrew Feetson saying that that Somerset Town Council um, requests that hearings be held on the proposal to uh, remove the divided highway uh, and create a two lane road on Little Falls Parkway. Okay. Thank you. Good discussion. Sorry, my um, system automatically shuts down at seven o'clock, so I have to reboot my other computer so I can pull up the agenda. And uh, what's what's the next topic? All rental update, which Our computer you goes bad at seven o'clock. Wow. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So uh, every seven p.m. I don't. I don't think she's here, but um, I'll give kudos to. Linda, who um, did the research and came up with this proposal for the town hall, um, you know, we we were looking. I, I don't think the rates for the town hall have been changed in in many many years. Um, but given that we've had we've done all these nice upgrades for the town hall, uh, it might be time to to look at it. Um, I think we would just need to update. Our, our fee schedule right now it's it's just fifty to fifty dollars to rent the town hall for five hours for and how long has it been fifty dollars for five hours yeah I, it, it, at least ten years uh, so um, you know uh, this was something we we had sort of talked about uh, after the renovations were done at the town hall and then COVID happened. So we, we weren't actually renting the town hall space, but especially now that things are opening up, uh, we ha we've had about a dozen people call that are interested in renting the town hall between, you know, between the beginning of May and, and through, through June and July. Um, we get requests for people that are doing political fundraisers, people that want to do just a party, uh, all, all sorts of things. And so Linda, Linda looked at what some of the other municipalities around us do for, for, rent, for renting their facilities and also looked at some other, um, some other uh, places nearby to, to, to try to get a sense. Um, I think the closest equivalent is is probably Garrett Park, uh, and they they do uh, three hundred fifty dollars for four hours. So it, it it's a little little bit less expensive than than our than than um, what she's recommended here. Um, but I, I think the bottom line I, I think is that to do a hundred dollar an hour rental fee is not outrageous. It's it's a very nice space that you you get the entire um the entire rent uh meeting meeting space as well as the the yard uh for the town hall um and uh 
Yeah, I, so I, I I think that uh, although it's a it's a it's a big jump, I I don't think it brings us into an unreasonable uh, range range for the cost of it. So remember, remember, you're just deciding tonight whether to put this on the agenda. But I think that given that you're changing the fee, that you might want to think about um, how you're going to publicize that. And perhaps you want to consider this for June instead of May so that there can be more public input because because uh, the, the fee doesn't necessarily, you, you know, it's one of the benefits of your, your taxes that you're getting a, a subsidized space. So, but it's up to the council to decide what's the appropriate fee. But I'm not, maybe this isn't enough, two weeks isn't enough time to, to um, get enough input. Yeah, I, that's fair. I, I had some thoughts too. One of my thoughts relates to my earlier comment, which is that we've got a lot of fees that have just sat there unaltered for years and years and years and years. And what I'm suggesting is that we actually present the current state of our fees at every budget meeting showing when the fee was last raised and we decide at the budget meeting whether we're going to raise any fees for the year. And we just build that into our operations. And that way we should probably avoid the trap of 20 years at the same fee. A uh, second point is that if we are making a more significant fee uh, and Jeffrey, I have to correct you, it is subsidized for residents, but in yeah. fact, um, non-residents are getting it without paying any taxes. So which comes to the fact that maybe what we should do is give residents a discount, um, in fact. Um, and that should be good. Robin, can um, can can in terms of if, if these fees are going to the budget committee, should the pool guest fee go there too as well? As well? Oh, it's, I'm talking about our budget sessions. <laughs> it's it's our, oh, okay. our, our budget sessions, not the budget committee. Our budget sessions. Oh, okay, all right. Well, well, right now the rule the. The only people that can rent the town hall are residents or someone that the residents recommended had sponsored, isn't that right? That's right, yeah. So that, that was one of the things that Linda had also pointed out is we, we may want to look at the rental policy too, um, you know, whether, yeah. whether we want to keep that, uh, one option would be to, uh, as as council member Barr suggested, a, a, a different fee for non-residents, for example, um, or or if we only want it to be open for for Somerset residents. And then you also want one of the th remember this is the first time you're going to be uh, renting the hall since it was uh, renovated, and I think there was it, I, I remember council member Zuichhauser who was um, very involved in the renovation was uh, concerned about um, the, the maintenance and that, that there should be some charges related to cleanup so that, so that, but, you know, so that between, if there's, if there's different events over the weekend that then the, the renter would compensate the town for paying an outside source to clean the place before it was re-rented the next day or, or later that day. So it, it's, 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 it's way more complicated than just should the fee be raised because, because the whole operation needs to be um, looked into. Right, if, um, thank you. Great discussion here. Um, I'm afraid I have a slightly different perspective. I don't think we should spend much time on this at all. I think that's what our new resource committee is for. And I'd like to see them give us a recommendation. I don't think we should be doing their job for them. Yeah, I Sounds agree. Good. And I think, I mean, I think that I, I definitely think that we should be raising the cost of the rental. Absolutely. Sure. 
I, I agree with, with taking positive steps here, but I think it should be part of a thoughtful, comprehensive approach to revenue. And that's why we stood up the revenue committee. Okay. I, agree, I agree with that, but I think the idea of putting our fees uh, into our annual budget things is something that we can do. We don't need the revenue committee's advice on that. It's oh, that, yes, that's that, that that's a great idea. And maybe would that be a change to our code or just pass a resolution or just a practice? I think it's just a change to our procedures. I don't think it's a change. It's, it's a resolution, right, Mr. Town Attorney? Yes, that's right, Mr. Mayor. I believe the fees are currently set forth in a, a resolution, so we would just amend that. And if there's if there's no current resolution, it might be a good idea to adopt one, have a schedule of fees. I it think we, we last did that in maybe 2019. I think the fall, like November of 2019 or so, I think was the last that's time we better. kind of comp comprehensively looked at our schedule of fees. Yeah, I'm looking to see if I can find it. I can do that later. The idea, the, in general, the idea is that you, and I think this goes hand in hand with what Councilor and Barr is saying, it, in, in general, you should vote on your fees the same time you vote on your budget for the fiscal year. Right. Now we're prepared to do that this year, but that doesn't mean that the town council can't do that sometime, you know, early in the next fiscal year. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, and as Matt said, there is a, a schedule of fees and that's on the website. And so it, it includes town hall rental. So to update that would, it would be a resolution to amend the fee schedule. Right. So what Robin was talking about was, was also, amending our process so that, so that whenever we discuss the budget and approve a budget, we review and approve the fee structure, right? Um, I think you're, you're right, Mr. Mayor. I, there's, it's too late for this current budget, um, but we could consider passing a resolution formally adopting that practice uh, in, the, in the next month or two. Does that make sense, Robin? Yeah, yeah. Okay. A any other questions, comments, or should we move on to what are aerobics fees? Okay. okay, what are aerobics fees? I'm confused about the math on this because it says I recommend that the water aerobics participants pay a fee of $100 per month. Um, but I mean, if they're only paying $8. Per session, is is water aerobics more than once a week? Yeah, it's yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh, got it. Yeah, so it's it's basically it's three times a week, um, and um, it we would maybe we need to tweak it a little bit because we have that first week in September, so obviously. It wouldn't be a, a full month then, but um, well, because even that means that, like, I mean, even if you do the math on that, if it's a eight dollars right now, that means that the people would have to go every single time in order to get to that a hundred dollars per month, yeah. right? No, because just... 12 three times a week times four, four weeks in a month is what 12 times $8 is $96 and we're proposing a hundred bucks per month. No, I did the math wrong. Right, right. So, well, some weeks are five weeks, some months are five weeks, some months are four weeks. So it's like four and a half weeks. So, I mean, it's pretty close to like having someone go. It's not, it it's basically time. breaks even pretty much, I think, is in the arithmetic. Do we lose money on this water aerobics each year? Um, it's not clear. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't. I don't know that I. I am able to. I, I don't it's, have it, that it, broken it, down it's, to be able to answer. It's, it's what known in, in federalese uh, in, in the grants world as direct and indirect costs. Um, where we don't lose money on the direct costs, but the indirect costs are not covered. 
Um, and that means, you know, things like heating the pool, it's not covered. Um, the pool but, facility I mean, is the not heating, covered. But, but the also, the pool comes with the pool being open, right? It's that's not the like point. That, that, like that, the water that, that, aerobics people so, use it for X. Right. Yeah. There's, there's another so piece to this. Yeah, yeah, uh, Shannon's another piece to this. So it's, so it's three times a week and it's, it's a little <coughs> cloudy out and I don't feel like going, or it's a little cold and I don't feel like going, which means we're not covering the cost for the instructor. So the idea is it costs X amount of dollars and, 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 and Matt knows what we have to pay the instructor for the summer. And so in order to make this a cleaner way to do this, we're asking people to sign up. Now, if they want to drop in, there'll be a drop in fee. It will be more than they pay now, but it will be a drop. There will be a drop in fee. So you can drop in. You can bring your, your mother with you. You can bring your daughter with you. You can drop in. But basically, we're asking to cover the costs of this. OK, let me let me just say something in the inter, in, in the interest of time. The issue tonight is whether you want to put this on the agenda for May. I, I want to say that the town manager and the liaison to the pool committee, Councilmember Heller, have worked a long time on this proposal. I'm glad there are a lot of questions about it. So, I, I, I mean, in the interest of time, you, if you agree to put it on the agenda for next month, then the... Um, idea, the proposal will be um, distributed, you know, publicized and clarified, and then you will have a hearing on it and debate and vote on it on, in May. You, you don't need to do that tonight. I mean, you have a lot of excellent questions, but the issue is whether you want to move forward with this recommendation that the town manager right. and Councilor Heller have worked hard on. So I, I support bringing it to the council meeting for a vote. Uh, does, is there anyone who objects? And if so, please explain why you wouldn't want to bring it forward to, to vote. This doesn't say actually you agree with it, but just to move this along. Well, uh, prob do we want some more community input in on it? I noticed we've had two uh, emails already on, on it tonight um, from folks. Uh, so writing a letter to the next issue of the journal, not this issue of the journal, um, and waiting to see what kind of community reaction we get might make some sense. The problem is we're really running out of time, Robin, because the next, the next journal comes out, you know, uh, we missed a journal. June. Yep. Yeah. So June, and then I we're think... already, already working on it. We're already in the pool in June. Right. Well, I think... The, the good news is, though, that the, the water aerobics don't begin until June. Oh, yeah? Well, there's also time There's also time to put something about this in the journal. So if you want to quickly, if you, what I would suggest is that, is that the manager. There are four pages already. Yeah. That's, that it's okay. So I would suggest the council member. Heller write an article, a brief article describing the proposal for water aerobics fees for this year. Okay, I can do that, but I can't do it immediately. I'm out of town. And um, it, well, the man, the manager can write it. I'll I'll be home in another day, but I can't. I won't get this. I can't get the, to this until Wednesday. Like the the town manager can write it. Yes, yeah, so just straight out of the background you've provided. Okay, uh, batting cage. Okay, also in the interest of time, Mr. President. So mm -hmm. I think everyone knows that the batting cage is something that is rarely used. And um, last year, and I guess the machine was taken away, right, Mr. Town Manager? And yeah, I, the machine broke. The machine broke. So, so, and last year, the council, the previous council authorized, well, I think, what was it, $1,800 for the netting? Okay. Yeah, and that, yeah. That has been, I guess there's some renewed interest in it. Uh, we did get um, three or four emails this week. 
But um, what I would propose is that um, I work to revitalize the batting cage. There used to be a batting cage committee and it kind of um, went dormant with the lack of use. So I, 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 I'm going to um, remember it's the mayor's prerogative to establish committees. So I will bring back, I will see if there's an interest in, in the, with the individuals that have um, expressed interest in the batting cage. And then uh, I'll bring that to the council in the near future. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, in case folks are interested, when you read the email from the, the resident, I was the one council member who voted against the batting cage net. But even though I voted against the net, now that we have the net and it's installed, I think it makes good sense to to try and get the thing functional. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, but I think we need, I think just like with pickleball and everything else, I think we need more formal, engaged public input and information. Yep. Yep. Sure. Um, this brings us to schedules. Marnie Shaw path dedication started June 4th. Excited about that. Do you have any details, Matt, to provide? Uh, um, I, I, I guess I just wanted to run it by you all to see if that works. I've, I have coordinated with Marnie a little bit uh, about it. So it's, it's a weekend that she's available. And the idea is we're gonna get signs on both ends of that little walkway there that say Marnie Shaw uh, path and um, maybe a, a, a small uh, outdoor uh, plaque as well, commemorating it, commemorating it, it, her her um, her time on the council. It's and on the agenda. It's on the agenda tonight, just to get your everyone's blessing for the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's clear yeah. on my calendar. Yep, yeah. that's great. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to um, meet the council president's um, scheduled time for this meeting. The the that's next a, item, the the ne in in the interest of time, the next item. Uh, I would like to suggest that the that we um, don't consider resuming in-person council meetings in September, which would mean that we would need to put on the council agenda for May the authorization, because I think the authorization for Zoom ends this month, correct, Mr. Town Manager? That's right, yeah, yeah. So without objection, I will put that on the agenda for May that we will continue Zoom through the through August. And then the last item is just to get your agreement to having the next work session on May 16th, which we had not scheduled in January. Right. So is there any objection to that? No, it's fine. I'm checking myself. Uh, All right. Fine, yeah. And with that, Mr. President, I will hand your meeting back to you for a motion to adjourn. Thank you for moving us forward expeditiously there. I move that we adjourn. Thank Your you second. all very much. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Have a good Have a night. Have a great evening. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Okay, take care.